Chancellor Jeremy Hunt this morning laid out his plans to turbocharge the British economy. Brexit remains a favourite punch bag for the media. They're always talking it down. But Jeremy Hunt quite rightly says our decision to leave the EU can be a catalyst for bold choices. The Chancellor added that his plan to grow the economy is, quote, necessitated, energised and made possible by Brexit. Well, joining me now to discuss this, I'm delighted to welcome the political commentator and former Brexit Party MEP Belinda De Lucy. Hi, Belinda. He's changed his tune, hasn't he? <laughs> well, maybe he's just rereading the script that Boris read out in his 2019 victory speech. <laughs> it was like a major deja vu. We have heard this all before. Boris came out in 2019 when he won, saying it is a new dawn, a new day. We're going to unleash ourselves into the world. We're going to have, we're going to unleash a primal wave of investment. And we heard it all with Boris. And what has happened is we've got stagnation nation still. So as much as I loved hearing what Hunt had to say, he was just regurgitating things that the Conservative Party have been saying for years now with very little action to back it up. There's no reason at all why the Conservative Party haven't passed through the EU uh, regulation reform bill yet. Uh, they claim that, that it's too hard and there's not enough time and the Lords are going to cause problems. I mean, it's excuse after excuse for the Conservative Party. Mm. Um, and so I do feel I took his his speech as dropping the Brexit bomb more to try and claw back the few remaining Brexiteer voters rather than actually believing in what he said. We've had similar mood music from Keir Starmer. The good news is that if you want to win the next election, you've got to love bomb Brexit. <laughs> Yes, well, listen, I've been love bombing Brexit for, for, for since 2000 and I don't know, whenever I did my EU law at uni. Um, and it's, it's all well and good to love bomb it, but unless it's backed up with action and political will, there's no political will in the Labour Party to make use of the opportunities of Brexit. And we haven't seen any evidence, really, bar a few Tory MPs like Jacob Rees-Mogg, um, to, to have the big change that people voted for. There are bills, for example, like the, um, the Digital Protection Information Act, which is a fantastic new bill to replace the, the innovation-crushing EU regulation. It was started in May. It has been delayed and delayed. There's been distractions. It's almost unworkable now. And the Conservatives have very little time to actually pass any of this through before the next election. Uh, that is a concern. Do you think the media are still talking Brexit down? <laughs> yes, and I think they will forever be talking Brexit down. I genuinely believe Brexit arrangement was an actual thing. Um, and they will. the political and media class want to associate every single drama and woe we experience as a country to Brexit. And in all truth, Brexit was simply a nation self-determining its own laws, making politicians accountable and allowing people to have more of a stake in the laws they have to live under. It's quite frankly nothing to do with what each political party wants to do with the powers we gifted them. And to be quite honest, the Conservatives were gifted this Excalibur of power by the British people and the machinery behind that party have hidden behind the apron strings of Mutter EU in panic over the accountability that comes with it and have only thrown breadcrumbs our way. Uh, we need divergence now or it becomes too easy to rejoin the EU through the back door with a Labour government. Well, I think you've got to play the long game with Brexit. I voted Remain because I predicted short-term economic disruption. However, I did see advantages to Brexit, which is why I've embraced the result. I've acknowledged a democratic mandate. And the day after that uh, plebiscite, I got behind the project because I do think that in time, uh, Brexit will unleash great economic and cultural potential for the country. However, do you think the forces at work within Westminster will try to undo Brexit? I mean, how far away could we be from re-entering the single market or joining a customs union? So what's happening now is because the Conservative Party seem to lack the political will to drive through all the opportunities that have been afforded them, it makes Brexit look like... Um, no change is happening and people voted for change in 2019 and they're seeing very little happen. And this is the way they damage Brexit and this is the way that they're going to put people off 
the idea of Brexit by just simply not doing anything about it. So it looks like it was the same as if we were in the EU. Um, and I just feel like we're at a point now where I don't believe we can trust the Conservative or Labour Party with reducing immigration, lowering tax, protecting our borders, or mm. using the Brexit opportunities fully. So I think it is time that the people have to decide, are they really going to reward these parties with their vote for more of the same, more delay, more being frightened of, of having this wonderful power to, t to make our country nimble and efficient and drive us forward? Uh, indeed. I mean, I would argue that Brexit is already a success because it's an insurance policy against ever closer union being a member of the United States of Europe, which it's my view is coming. It's an insurance policy against membership, membership of a single European army, a single currency. It's an insurance policy against free movement. Uh, of course, we've got our own trade policy now. We can do trade deals with the rest of the world. There's a deal in the offing with India uh, and a billion people, a massive market. However, there is a flip side. Um, what would you say to those small businesses who are no longer exporting to EU countries because of the paperwork? And do you have any scintilla of buyer's regret in relation to Brexit? Oh, well, on your last point, never. Never will I think that the best interests of the British people will be served in the dark corridors of Brussels and with the unaccountable commission. So, so never for that. But what I do feel for the small businesses is there was always going to be disruption. This is a huge change of governing our country, and it was never going to happen overnight. It was never going to be a magic pill. Just as when we joined the European Economic uh, Community, fishing uh, community had to completely change overnight. There will be winners and there'll be losers. But I will say they have had seven years of preparing to adjust their businesses um, because of Brexit. You know, this was this happened in 2016, and it was only because of the Conservative Party and other political parties trying to, uh, you know, rerun the vote and not deliver Brexit. So remember, the Conservatives were forced to deliver Brexit. This isn't a natural home for them. Um, and it's only because they gave them hope that we would somehow reverse Brexit, that they didn't prepare their businesses over seven years to deal with the, uh, the, the form filling that is a natural occurrence when we do take a step back from the EU. And, and maybe they should have spent a little bit more time seeking other marketplaces and other opportunities. But of course, I feel for their disruption, but it's a price worth paying to uh, extract ourselves, not just from this this anti-democratic project, but one that is evolving to become more anti-democratic and expanding. Ukraine is on the horizon. There will be more freedom of movement. There'll be more movement of cheap labor into richer countries. And I actually think we'll see the EU, as it expands, become more divided. And there even, may even be more civil unrest because it cannot run smoothly without denying people the veto. You know, democracy is not its friend. It needs to completely reject democracy to be able to run this huge empire smoothly. I've got another one for you, just to put you in a good mood. Uh, Brexit is an insurance policy against payments of £20 billion a year, which after two decades is the entire cost of the pandemic. Uh, listen, have a brilliant <laughs> Friday night. Belinda De Lucy will see you again soon. Fantastic contribution. You. What's your reaction? Um, are you concerned about Brexit? Is it going well? Is it going badly? Let me know your experience.